Alrighty, so we should be seeing everything there. Perfect, no problem at all. All right, guys, well, thanks very much for having me here today. Just a quick background, Webcam is a digital agency that is really focused on the customer experience. We've been around for nearly 22 years, so hence the gray hair, um, but we have really gone through a lot of changes in that 22 years, focusing on uh, different technologies, um, different customer experiences, and, and as the internet has matured, obviously e-commerce has really changed over that time as well. Customer experiences for us is what drives all the designing, all the developing, all of the things we do comes back to the customer. So, you know, what I'm hoping to do today is, is take you through a little bit about how we go about it, how we look at that customer experience and how you can optimise your customer experiences um, where um, you're focusing on the, the things that your clients really value. So let's start by talking about time. Um, with a person of my age at 55, you start to see parents passing on. You realize that with your kids, that time goes quicker and quicker and you get, you know, um, you know, you want to value your time. And I'm sure, as you know, uh, on a day to day basis, if any of you are like me, I've got not enough time, too many tasks, too many things to do. And if I get distracted or I get taken off task, um, there's never enough time in the day. So one of the things that I would strongly recommend to people is time is one of the most valuable assets that your customers have. If you can respect that and think about that when you're designing the experience, looking at the content you put on your site, keep in mind that this is one of the, the attributes that clients really look for and uh, want to have a frictionless shopping experience. So I'm sure we've all the situation where uh, the internet's gone down or your site is slow to load and we know that uh, site speed is the number one uh, thing that people are looking for when it comes to their shopping experience. We know conversion rates drop off dramatically. We know that Google rates site speed as one of the most important things to help you uh, get up higher in your rankings and so whatever I you know, whatever else you do to your website, the number one thing you need to do is get a fast website. You need to strip out um, unnecessary information, especially on your home page. You need to look at investing correctly in the right infrastructure to make sure that you do get the speed and you will be rewarded by higher conversion, but more importantly, your customers will complete the task that they came there. People are, are not tolerant about slow sites and uh, they will leave and they will find something that is quicker and I'm sure all of you can relate to that. And it's a no brainer, but it's one of the number one things that we spend our time with, with our customers to improve um, that customer experience. The second thing that I would suggest people look at when they're looking at improving their customer experience is looking at the navigation. We spend a lot of time when we're designing sites to really think through what's the least amount of clicks to get to the content that is relevant for the customer, whether that is through search, whether it's through the navigation, but laying out your information in a way that allows people to know where they are and how they can interrogate your uh, catalogs of uh, products in a logical and effective way. So in this particular example of my family ski business, for those of you that know Larry Adler Ski Shops, um, you'll see here that we've actually got a fly out navigation. Um, we're able to feature various products. We've been able to segment uh, the uh, various categories and also we're able to show the second and tertiary level navigation in one click. They do not need to click to move to the next phase, to the next phase. They can see this very easily in a fly out navigation. We've also, in this particular case, segmented our customers into uh, scan versus outdoor and travel. But we also know that a number of clients will want to find products as they relate to a particular brand. It could be a Heli Hansen or an Arterix, the like. So if they're not really interested in looking at it from a activity like skiing or snowboarding, but more interested in brand, we make that available. For those that obviously are looking at other services, they can easily see that in the navigation. So these things are really quite important um, and could be a way to reduce the number of clicks that your client needs to, to go through to get to the particular um, product that you want to get them to. The next thing that we spend a lot of time at looking at and when we're optimizing sites or taking over some websites that clients have had built 
previously and looking at that customer experience is not only obviously laying out the information so it's clean and concise and people can make their decisions, but really looking at the filtering rules that you put onto the left-hand side. Quite often with a lot of the out-of-the-box platforms, you'll find that you get a single filter rule on the left or the product is by relevance or price or time. But one of the things I would implore you to do on your sites, especially if you've got a bigger catalogue, is to consider multi-select filtering. And you'll see here on this Forestry Tools website, which is uh, this happens to be on Shopify, this particular one, you'll notice that we're able to filter the products on the left by category or by brand or by price, um, but we're also able to select more than one item. So it's not just digging or uh, weeding, or it's not just the uh, one of the brands, you can actually select two or three of the brands you want and then filter that for the customer. This saves the customer time. It saves them clicking between different pages and it makes it a much better and easier um, uh, process for the client to be able to select the products and the products that they want and the information that they want to have a look at. The other area I wanted to talk about is search. When we first started building websites, you know, 20 odd years ago, uh, search was always put on your website when the navigation didn't work. Uh, over that time, obviously, Google and Bing and the various search engines have really helped find content. So as much as we look at the good navigation, you really need a good search. Now, some of the platforms out there have an OK search out of the box, um, but then they also have with artificial intelligence that is now starting to do uh, product recommendations and automating some of those processes. But there are things like even like Clearview as an example, which we've got here on the Shorties website. Now, this is a, an Adobe commerce based website. Uh, and what we have done in this particular search is really enhance the way a person gets the results shown. And this, as you start typing in the search, this starts predicting words you're looking for and you'll notice in the middle here it's got the suggestions are you after wine are you after wine glasses are you after natural wine uh, not only that it also has segmented the results that you're getting where you've got the products on the right hand side that the search is recommending are the right fit for your search words but on the left hand side we've also separated out the blog posts and the uh, FAQs and the help information. So this is takes the traditional alpha search or fuzzy search and is now being able to enhance it. Um, you've got a combination of uh, segmentation, predictiveness, categories, um, pricing images, all of these things are in one research results which allows, again, the customer to find the most relevant information in the shortest period of time. And if you haven't looked at some of these more advanced search functions and features that can be enhanced on these e-commerce websites, this makes a huge difference to the time it takes a person to select the right product and obviously increase your um, basket size and also your conversion rate on your particular website. So strongly recommend looking at some of the more advanced searches. So let's then go one step further and we start looking at uh, product recommendations and bundles. So you'll always find, and I'm sure many of the speakers today have been talking about conversion rate and average order value. And as retailers, we all want to increase the basket size. But I think one of the things that a lot of customers want to do is they want to shop the look. They want to not just get the t-shirt, they want the belt and the pants, they want to complete the outfit and they, um, do like, to be told what to do in a lot of cases. Men are, are quite pragmatic shoppers. Uh, if they see what they want and they can get it all in one go, they will go and buy it. And we see that happening in real shopping, as in well, real shopping, uh, on face-to-face -face shopping in the shopping centers. Men go uh, infrequently and uh, normally buy quite a bit. So here's a great example from Callaway where they're using some artificial intelligence and product recommendation tools to not only um, provide the initial product that the person is looking at in the top left-hand corner, but you may also want to look at these companion, pos uh, companion products to round out the look. They've gone one step further than that. If you don't like the, the four items there, then they don't relate other combination, you can actually also click on the next outfit and it gives you a couple of options all within the page without having to navigate off to another area. This again 
respects the client's time, it looks at the different attitudes of the people, and it also obviously has the benefits of increasing the basket size and conversion rate that you have on the site. So again, very much think about how you bundle your products and complete the look rather than being focused on a single transaction with a single item. We've just had uh, Nosto up before us and there's a number of different technologies out there that's looking at user-generated content. Uh, user-generated content has been around for some time. There are a number of platforms, whether it's the Review IOs, the Trust Pilot, the Akendos, the Yotpos. There's a whole raft, and Nosto, et cetera. There's a whole raft of technologies out there. They all have their uh, different features and functions. But if you think about it from a customer's experience, and I'm sure many of you have done this also when you've gone um, on holidays and things, whether you're looking at different resorts or different restaurants, people really do appreciate their peers' recommendations. It is a validation. It's all about trust. It's all about um, decision to buy. And here's a great example from Aussie Bum, uh, who is using, in this particular case, Trustpilot, um, and is bringing through with their APIs the various feedback from various particular uh, tracky decks. And uh, this is an extra piece of content that's being added to the features and functions and the price of the product that it's endorsing it. And this, again, will increase conversion rate. And where this helps save time is it helps build the trust. It builds the validation and it allows the customer to go, yep, I like the pants, like the price. The, my peers, it's an easy decision, let's then move on. So this is a great way to experience and again, drive your uh, revenue. I also think that this is an important uh, tool to use in your business because it allows you to also have a two-way conversation with your client. Post-purchase, you're able to then reach your client and a lot of these pro uh, uh, systems are automated so it saves you time and ask the client a very simple question with a very simple feedback and allows them to give positive and negative or uh, critical um, comments back to allow you to enhance your offering and your services. And I know a number of my clients that are in the offline space that are finding that this is very valuable experience as much as on the online experience as well. So let's talk a little bit about the mobile experience and, and what people do from a commerce perspective. Uh, we all uh, get our email, we get our messaging on mobile and initially the first reaction for most people is to then uh, click and go to a particular store um, or website. Uh, so your mobile experience in many cases is a browsing experience and it can be a convenient shopping experience. So I've got two examples here on these slides. The one on the left, which is Hanley's Cleaning, um, I just really want to on this particular site that the search bar is clear and can top of the page. Very small element right at the top, allowing the customer on a phone to be able to search and find their products quickly and easily rather than to click onto the search, where you'll see that on the Bunnings one on the right hand side. Put that step up early, people can then navigate quickly and easily, and invariably in a lot of mobile interfaces, it is easier to search with the search bar than it is to go through the flyout navigations and the multi-step navigation function that you clicked on the hamburger. So definitely consider that um, in your information architecture. There'll be lots of debates and there's different theories about burger, whether it should be on the left or the right, depends on whether you're a thumb typer or not. Uh, you'll see on these both, both of these examples that the hamburger happens to be on either side. The one on the right hand side, the Bunnings example, is really quite important here, one of the advantages on phones uh, is the ability to be able to localize your content. If a person does have localization capabilities on their phone and it is switched on, um, by using your current location automatically by changing the order of where your stores are um, or any local information and making that relevant for the client without him having to ask them will make a world of difference for them uh, to get to your content 
Uh, for those of you that are in the Omni channel with a set of stores as well as an online store, this is a great example where find my nearest store. Well, I shouldn't have to ask you. You should know where I am if my locations are on my phone. Automatically change that order and display it and make it easy for me and get in a timely manner the content that I need to know where the local store is and when it's open. Taking mobile a little bit further, you will hear the terminology uh, over the last few years of PWAs. Uh, prog progressive web applications. Uh, this is definitely a way that web developers and designers are starting to build out a lot of websites. Uh, and here's one as an example, which is Alibaba. Um, the allows it to be a much faster to load website. It allows you also to uh, navigate through the site quickly and easily. It also allows you to also put a button on the it on the home page so that the client can get back to the content quickly and easily and it obviously works on lots of different devices so again it's a technique that is available out there for the developers to build a faster more effective site and again save time for the customer one of the last or a couple of last things i'd like to go through is about the use of video we work heavily with video and i can tell you that most online experiences are cold. It's normally images and text. The one thing why people love social media, why people love streaming content, why people love YouTube is that video. Um, from a learning and a training perspective, video gives you the highest retention of information in the shortest period of time. So here's a great example where Bunnings is not only selling you the products, but they are using in this particular case, a technology called Brightcove, where they're putting tips and tricks on how to use their products. And this one um, allows clients to make a decision on uh, how to use the product, how to go and use it in the marketplace and deepens the relationship with the client. Again, makes it easy. Here's an example of video being used by REI in the US where they're looking at video to help the customer make the buying decision. So here, is, in this case, is a marmot tent. Um, I have various colors, I can see the specs, I can see the price, I can see the star ratings, but I've got a 30 second video that will actually show me how easy it is to install. I would never get that from written information, at some pictures. So the video really brings this to life. Now, for those of you that are really interested in statistics, um, you're looking at around about 64% improvement in your conversion rate if a person watches a video. So can I very much uh, encourage you to use to uh, improve your conversion rate, but more importantly, make it easy for the customer to make a buying decision or principles that you just can't get across with a picture or some words. Also, another example from REI where video really or ex with your customer experience and helping them save time is we all get customers that want to return products. We also get very frustrated with the process, let alone the logistics and the time and, and the packing and sending and all of those things that occur. But if a person is able to make a better fitting decision at the beginning when they are buying, um, you can use video to illustrate how to do that. So REI, a lot of uh, shoe returns. It was costing them a lot of money. Their customers were frustrated by actually showing people how to fit their shoes correctly, how to um, size it correctly. They were able to reduce in, in immensely the amount of returns they got and improve their customer satisfaction. Again, saving time for both the merchant and also the customer. Okay, and so just to wrap this up, I'm, I think I'm pretty much on time at the moment. Quite a few little features there, but let's just run through them again on how you can improve time for you and your customer and also improve that customer experience. One, optimize your site speed. Two, make sure you've got clear and consistent navigation. Definitely need to have filtering on your category pages and where impossible, have a multi-select filtering. Many of the technologies um, are now coming out with also artificial intelligence and things in this particular space as much as they're doing that for the search and also for product recommendations. Fantastic navigation tool and can really help you not only optimize your site and see what products and services people are searching, but
but it also allows the customer to have uh, predictive search and better search results will allow you to improve uh, time to purchase. Companion sales, upselling, average order value, shop the look is a key strategy there. Bring content, leverage the community to endorse and support your products, allow the customer to build trust quickly and effectively. Obviously, mobile first or mobile experience is critical. Leverage the data that it can provide to automate the information and prioritize it and personalize it to is key. And lastly, start humanizing your shopping experience. Bring video in to life, make it engaging. You will get customers retaining and understanding that information in the shortest period of time. And will allow you allow to have empathy with your brand. It will save time on returns, it will save time on purchase, and it will allow people to use your products more effectively and again saving them time.